Hi, my name is Bogdan. This is one of the many videos that I'm doing on the Action Form 3.2 release. And in this particular video, I want to show the new server expressions that we added for the conditions field. And if you are not already familiar, let me quickly show what I'm talking about. This condition here that determines if this field will, will appear in the form. And there is another condition field in the action here. And this one determines if the action will get executed. Note that this expression runs on the server side as opposed to the binding expressions which run on the client side and these are also new in 3.2 and I'll follow up in a different video. Okay, so before I run into some example, let me tell you how it was in previous versions. So basically in pre previous version you had to write a token, for example my token. I think there was one like that, one has role or it was user has role administrator and you had to return true or false like uh, something like that true false so, uh, true something like that so if the current user had the administrator role the talk uh, the value returned by the token would be true but this was very limiting syntax and we've replaced it with um, something where you can actually use operators and have a left side and a right side to compare and we still maintain the token syntax, so you still can use tokens or my tokens or form fields tokens, but you get to specify what to compare it against. So I will start with a simple example where I want to display this form field. Let's call it ID. Only if I'm in edit mode and the edit mode, let's say I figure it out by looking at the query string. And let's say I will have a parameter called um, let's say mode equals edit something like that and to do this I use a token that exists in my token it's called query string double colon and the name of the parameter in this case mode and now I need to compare it to something and I use this equal equal operators this is a standard uh, C or JavaScript operator so you have equal equals and then you have different is um, question mark um, exclamation mark sorry followed by a weak equal that that would be the left si hand side is different than the right hand side and then you have the standard numeric operators like greater than or lower than and this uh, i don't think they are supported right now but probably they will be until the release but in this case i want to compare it that the mode is edit okay Let me save this real quick and go back. You see now I don't see anything here in the form, but if I go into query string and I say mode equals edit, the page reloads and you see now I have an ID parameter. Let me go back to edit. This was a simple example. Now you may want to show or hide fields in response to other events like for example you make a web service determine something and based on that you take an action and you can actually run an in, uh, some actions on init and in this case i'll just use this plain action inject form data but normally you could run a query or make an http request but i'll just use this for simplicity and let's say that um, there is a value that comes from this uh, web service SQL query or, or, or whatever and I'll call it again let's say mode and I'll give it the value let's say again true so I'm consistent and now here instead of checking the query string I will check the mode and now mode is the name of the parameter that came in this action I store it under name mode and wherever you can use token you can use this uh, token syntax to access the value of the form data and form data is not necessarily only fields 
it can be data that comes from actions like in this case i use this inject for data action to add an, a new field to the collection of form data that i can use here and again this doesn't have to be static it can come from a number of sources and you can even combine it for, for example you can say mode equals and here you can use a, a my token okay in this case i'll just leave it like this and now i'll save and i'll go back to demonstrate it i must have done something wrong let me quickly check mode equals equals edit and i'm injecting mode equals true okay no mode equals edit it has to be the same thing okay and now if i go back now i see the field before moving on to actions let me show you one more trick let me go back to the admin mode and this mode is actually a string object in dotnet so you can actually invoke its properties or and methods and in this case for example i can write i can check if it contains the word let's say ed, ed which is part of edit and this method already returns a boolean so i no longer have to check it but i could check it with against true so i could ra write it like this contains true and same goes if you want like i said earlier that uh, numbers are not supported you can easily uh, convert it for example int dot parse convert mode to int and then use the int operators that are, that are not working temporarily so you can you have this workaround okay so let me show you this example real quick so here i'm uh, checking that mode contains ed which contain which it does let me go back and you see again i see this form if on the other hand i would write something that doesn't exist there let's say vv you see the, the field no longer appears so so that's the trick you can you can uh, leverage tokens you can leverage dotnet api like contains and you can uh, leverage operators like equals with uh, static values and you can also use form data and you can also use tokens and same thing will be for the actions so let me add a button I'll call it this submit and in this button i will add two actions i will add an action and i will use display message normally for a real life example i could use for example to insert data or to send an email only when some condition occurs but again in this case for simplicity i will just uh, add to display message and show one of the message when the mode is edit and uh, the other one when the mode is not edit you did this in edit mode and here again i'm using the same syntax mode equals equals edit yeah so this is basically dotnet syntax except this token syntax that actually gets replaced with some code before being compiled into an expression and evaluated so but the rest you have to think that is dotnet syntax and needs to be a uh, boolean okay and in this other i will i will uh, do the inverse namely i will write mode not equal to edit okay and now i'm saving this i'm going back to test it let me submit it and it says sorry you are you're not in edit mode yeah this actually makes sense because i i don't have this mode variable here i loaded it on init on the init event and this means that is not available on the submit it's loaded 
only for the on init event and because I didn't store it anywhere or did anything with it it was basically lost at the end of the initialization event if I wanted it to um, to stay I would have put in it in a hidden field and now I will add one uh, action similar action for the bu this button again a inject form data and here I'll write the same mode equals edit save this go back now if I submit I get the message you did this in edit mode because that variable exists and I just realized that maybe I wasn't entirely accurate when you do the inject action it actually does save it in the form state but not on the initialization event the initialization event never saves the state state because the user may not su submit the form and then this would just pollute data but if you have multiple uh, submits multi-step forms for example that form data would actually be saved in the form state in the database so it can later be loaded back in the memory anyway this is it it's not complicated you only have to remember that always you always have to return a boolean and you have to uh, respect the dot net um, syntax especially the c-sharp syntax and you can use tokens or you can use my tokens or you can use uh, form tokens and by form tokens meaning um, data that was submitted but that only makes sense for reactions because for form fields data uh, there is no data submitted yes but you can use data that you extract with in the initialization event that you extract with action from various sources and that's it i hope this helps and thank you for your time